Greetings and welcome to the Anatomy of an MLA Book Citation. My name is Sean Heron and I am the English Librarian here at Cal Poly Pomona. If you have any questions regarding this video in particular, or MLA citation in general, please feel free to contact me. My email address is smharen at cpp.edu. In this tutorial, we're going to briefly introduce MLA style citation and provide you with a basic example of an MLA book citation, which we will then dissect, describing each of the constituent parts of that citation, why they're included, and how to format them in the citation. Hopefully, at the end of this video, you will understand the basic principles of citing a book in MLA style citation, and you will be able to construct your own basic book citations. To start out, what is MLA citation? The MLA citation style is laid out in the MLA Handbook, which follows the standards adopted by the Modern Language Association, hence the acronym. This citation style is used most commonly by English Comp, English Literature, Rhetoric, and Foreign Language courses. As of 2016, the MLA Handbook is in its 8th edition, so the version of MLA citation we will be covering in this video is MLA 8th. Okay, so now that we know what MLA citation is, how do we create the citation? Well, this is where we get into the gory details of dissecting a citation to show you how it works. However, to really get the most out of this part of the video, it helps if you have the proper tools. At the very least, a paper and pencil or pen, and maybe some highlighters if you think they would help. Feel free to pause the video now and collect your tools. Got everything? Great. Okay. So here you see the book citation we're going to dissect. Take your paper and write this citation exactly as you see it on your screen in the center of your piece of paper. Make sure to leave plenty of room for notes. Go ahead and pause the video while you write down the citation. Ready? Awesome. So now I'm going to take the citation apart piece by piece and describe each part, why it's there, and how it's formatted. As this is just a basic example, I may refer to some other situations you may come across while citing sources. If at any point you need more time to take notes about what I'm talking about, feel free to pause the video and start again when ready. So the first part of most citations will be the author's name. In MLA style, this is formatted last name, comma, first name, with a period at the end of the first name. The reason for this formatting is because your works cited page is organized alphabetically by author last name. Hence, it makes sense for it to be the first thing that pops out in the citation. But what happens if there's more than one author? Well, now it gets a little more complicated. The first author is formatted last name, comma, first name, comma, then you use the word and, followed by the second author, whose name is formatted in the normal first name, last name format, followed by a period. If there are three or more authors, you only include the first author, followed by the phrase et al which is Latin for and others. The period goes at the end of AL. If the book's author is a corporate entity, like the American Library Association, you enter its name as written. You do not try and determine which is the first name and which is the last. As always, end with a period. Finally, if a book has no author, you simply admit any author name and begin with the next part of the citation, which is the title of the book. The reason we include the title of the book should be pretty clear. It's the specific work by this author that we're citing. The title of the book should be formatted as it appears on the book's title page. Same spelling, same capitalization, etc., followed by a period. If the book is a later edition, it gets noted here, for example, second edition. Please also note that, the that in this case the title ends with a comma and the edition is not italicized. If the book is part of a multi-volume set, like Volume 2 of 3, the volume of the book should be noted. Once again, in this case, the title ends with a comma, and the volume part, in this case VOL period 2, is not italicized. The next element in the citation is the publisher's name. This should be formatted exactly as it appears in the book, followed by a comma. We include the publisher to help make it clear which edition of the book you got your information from, as pagination may be different in different editions. Finally, we include the date of publication on the end of a citation, followed by a period. The date of publication is included for similar reasons as the publisher, to help determine the edition of the book. 
It may also be helpful if a book has multiple editions because sometimes information changes drastically from one edition to the next. For example, Mary Shelley first published her classic Frankenstein in 1818. In 1831, a new edition of the book came out which was heavily edited by Shelley following the death of her husband Percy Bysshe Shelley, giving the book a markedly different tone. In this particular case, the edition of the book you're reading matters a lot. But what about ebooks? Well, for an ebook, you include all of the information I've just noted, but you also include either a DOI or a URL. What's a DOI? Well, a DOI is a persistent URL that should provide access to the ebook, hopefully for the foreseeable future. For that reason, MLA Style Citation prefers the use of a DOI to a URL whenever possible. If there is a DOI or URL available, it goes after the period at the end of the publication date. It is also helpful to point out here that if your citation includes more than one line of text, the second line is indented. This type of indent is referred to as a hanging indent. That takes care of the bibliographic citation, but the bibliographic citation is only one half of a complete MLA citation. Each MLA citation has two parts, the bibliographic citation and the in-text citation. Why do you need both? Well, the bibliographic citation helps the reader know what article you got the information from, but doesn't tell the reader what part of the work it was taken from, nor does it tell the reader where in the article you cited you got that idea or quote. To learn more about in-text citations, please check out our tutorial on in-text citations, MLA style. Now, obviously, there are a lot more types of sources to cite than just books, and there are a lot more situations for citing books than we've covered in this brief video. If this video didn't answer your question, there are more resources available to help you cite your work. The Purdue Online Writing Lab, or OWL for short, provides an excellent website covering a lot of different scenarios and rules for MLA citation. To access the OWL, simply type in Purdue OWL MLA into Google or the search engine of your choice. You can also reference the MLA style guide itself by typing MLA 8th into OneSearch. Finally, you can always contact a librarian for citation assistance. You can email us at libraryhelp, one word, at cpp.edu, or call the reference desk at 909-869-3084. Thank you for watching.